Hey everybody, time for another Emacs video. It's been quite some time. I mean, actually, let's let's take a look. Uh, let's see when the last one was. It was uh, well, I don't know when it was, but it was a long time ago. So time for another one. And um, uh, you know, these are fewer and farther between, mostly because um, well, one because I don't have as much time, um, but also because um, I you know I, I have to find more stuff. My my Emacs stuff has been kind of pretty consistent. And at the beginning, I showed videos of trying to get people um, help get people um, you know exposure to the packages that I was using, and now we're here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here was the issue. Um, we're starting the new semester. And because um, I'll be using a different multiple programming languages, I wanted to look again at trying to get a consistent interface to the languages. So um, I'm using Clojure, Clojure script for myself, uh, just hobbyist stuff, and I haven't actually touched that in a while. But for that, I'm using CIDR, and that's that. Um, but then I was using, um, for C++, um, which we used for the core courses at Hunter, um, I was using Irony. Um, yeah, basically it was like Irony and it was kind of mushed together. Um, for Python, which I use in my CS0 class and also for some of my own stuff, um, I was using uh, LP and Jedi. Um, and for Java, I never really got a good, um, and Java is what we're using in our teacher certification programs, I never really got something that was great for Java. It was all kind of clunky and kludgy. Um, and so I wanted to reevaluate that at the beginning of the semester. So one of the cool things was um, that's been emerging in the last couple of years is a language server protocol or LSP. And um, LSP is pretty cool. Uh, the idea is that um, you'd have one interface through your editor and it would connect to a language server on the other side that was running, you know, just on your machine. And it would be able to do all the kind of the completions, the, the refactoring, all the good stuff in a consistent way throughout. And so I tried LSP mode originally, and I tried this a couple of years ago, and it, it just didn't work. Um, and then I tried it again last year because, you know, I was just desperate for Java to get something that kind of worked. And it, it kind of worked, but I, I wasn't really happy with it, um, you know, for me. And, uh, you know, it's not to say it's a bad project. Um, you know, if you're a professional coder in Java, it's probably a lot better um, than what I did. But, but for me, it didn't work. So, like, here, if we look at... Um, this, this is my Emacs config. I've removed all of my programming stuff from here. So I do have some programming in, like, like you know, I still have my snippets. So that'll help with programming. And I've got Magit. And, you know, so I've got like the base level stuff. But I don't have anything specific. I took all the, you know, the C, I left closure there because that's just using CIDR. But I got rid of you know, all the C++ stuff, all the Python stuff, and all the Java stuff. Um, but it's still there. It's still installed. Like the packages, if I look at, um, if I look at, uh, you know, packages that I've downloaded, you'll see that, um, you know, LSP is still installed, and LSP Java is still installed, and Jedi Core, they're still installed. Um, I just, uh, I'm just not activating anything. But so let's take a look. Let me show you the things that I didn't like about LSP. Um, and let's go to hello.java. And the first thing is um, I'm going to turn on LSP mode. And again, I'm not doing, I'm just doing, or LSP, I'm just doing this manually because I took out of the configuration. And one of the things that happened is um, when I used LSP, it would ask this stuff about like, um, project not in a project directory and gave me a bunch of options and if you hit the wrong thing it, you were kind of screwed and I still don't know where that stuff is stored and that was just like it just didn't work for me I'm like you know if you're going to do this document it to let me know um, now if you're a professional Java programmer and you're doing like real systems you know like you're using build systems and you're using like Maven or Ant or whatever they use in Java these days I'm sure that's good for you, but for me who's teaching and just using little things, um, I just needed that to be documented better. But but it basically did work, you know, so if I did import, well, let me make sure, I, I may have to reload this again. It says I'm connected. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you know, and it's it's giving me the completions. 
uh, public class hello main and you know and but here's what I don't like you see I would get this change modifiers to final which is a good thing but um you know it, it just got very busy so if I have int able uh, then I would have like and it's like oh so uh, you know, then I get like a for loop you know, and I'd get all this poppy uppy stuff that just didn't work for me. Um, you know, n can't be resolved to a ver, and of course these are, these do have to be fixed. But and this is probably if you're a developer, it's probably fine. But if you know you're now sharing your screen on Zoom with beginners and they're seeing all this stuff flashing all over the place, probably not the best. So so this isn't to say that LSP is bad. Um, you know, but it is to say that. Um, it wasn't working for Java for the things that I needed it for. Um, and that was kind of a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, and it was kind of a bear to get running. Um, so it wasn't horrible, though. So I'm just going to kill this for now and make sure that I, I'm just going to kill any other these buffers as well. And uh, let's just go back to uh, uh, do you want to restart? No. OK. Um, and so we're just going to go back to my configuration file. And so, so LSP looked promising, but it didn't solve my Java problem. And if it didn't solve my Java problem, it probably wouldn't solve my C++ problem um, and my Python problem. Not that I had real problems with them. So anyway, poking around, there's another um, LSP, another language server protocol application called um, Eglot. And Eglot. Um, you know, it, it looked a little, it looked nice, it looked worth trying. It looks like both packages have upsides and downsides, but I wanted to see if this was better for me. So, um, so I, I installed it and, um, and this is gonna be for C++, Python, and Java. I mean, I know that, that I know it's going to do that for us. And so um, I copied over the code for um, Eglot before and, um, there it is. I just have to use the package. And um, if you look at Eglot, Eglot, whatever, if you look at it for C++, it says here that it uses CCLS, but it'll also work with Clang D. And if you look at CCLS, you have to kind of build that. And Clang D, um, do I have a terminal still open here? OK, I guess I do. These are just, um, uh, this was just testing my audio before. So let's do this. And it turns out that you can just install Clang D uh, with an apt get install. And that sounded kind of promising. Um, so I, 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 you know, and it said this in the documentation somewhere if you read the web page. Um, so I just had to set the Eglot server program for C and C to be Clang D. Uh, 10.0, uh, or, you know, 10, and then add these hooks. So let's run this and it should all be good. And um, temp z hello.cpp. And it says connected. And that was, a, that was just a, um, a snippet. But even there with include, you know, now we're getting the completions. Uh, the you know, union, I guess that doesn't help. I, I don't know how much this does include. Let's get main here. Again, that's a snippet. Uh, actually, actually, I want to see something here. Main as a snippet. Uh, and now if I say int able, able equals 10, uh, double baker equals 20, baker equals baker plus able. I know I'm mixing my types here. Uh, now, for notice that this is not a snippet here. Um, if I do, uh, if I do for, well, this is actually... Um, the you know the you know these the language server dealing with it um, so I'm going to do that and initial statement uh, you know I can give my for loop here so this is looking pretty cool I can also do stuff like this I can bring up Baker or Able and it marks all of them I can do Eglot rename I haven't I just installed this the other day so I haven't done any key bindings yet um, let's rename Able to Sable um, so it looks pretty good you know notice on the bottom that's a double its value is um, Sable is an int um, you know I can be like uh, uh, Baker equals 
And now notice I'm getting these completions. Stay over that. Assigning double from incompatible type. Uh, okay, that's an issue. Um, returns a random integer between zero, so I probably want this to go to Sable. But you'll see that it works, and it was very easy to configure. And contrasting this with the um, with the with the the LSP for Java, much less busy. It just put things on the bottom, which is easy for a student not to get confused with on a presentation. Uh, let's see what this says here. I guess uh, it's arg. See, I'm you know, unused parameters. Okay, um, and it's got other features as well. So again, I'm just kind of uh, scratching the surface, but that was pretty cool and pretty easy. Um, so for Python, it turns out all I have to do is add a hook for Python mode. And execute that. And now we're in Python. Able equals 10 plus random. And again, it's doing the completion. And it's giving us the stuff at the bottom. No new line there. Uh, let's see if we give it a new line. Will it bring up? No, it's not. Um, that. Let's see. Will this give us help with that? Um, I guess it doesn't. Random variable generator. Uh, L, whatever. We can try this again. I'm just starting to play with this. Um, print able. You know, it has that same feature. It marks both of them. Um, and of course, you know, it still does the basic stuff, you know, CP run my terminal, you know, run that, okay. Um, but it was really easy to set up and again, not too busy. So now we're going to get to the, um, you know, the big one, Java. Um, and so let's try, and I know this isn't going to work. And let's go to Tim Z, hello. Java, and it gives me an error in command hook. Um, it can't find the Eclipse JDD LS, so that's a little bit of an issue. And if we look here for um, for Java, if I click on here, um, and this was a little unclear, I, I somehow had to get this installed. Um, and and let's just do a couple of searches here on the documentation. I did work out a solution to this. Um, and uh, we could look, so we could look at the source code for that. But uh, but anyway, let me try this again. Just running Eglot manually, and it's saying, "Hey, what's the path to the JDT?" Uh, now it turns out that. Um, oh, and for um, let me go back to Python for a second. For mm -hmm. Python, I did have to install. Uh, Pi LS, and so, but you'll see here, this is just regular install on the system. So pip install, Python language server all, you just have to get that on your machine and you're good to go. But anyway, so here, um, I've already installed uh, under Emacs, I installed LSP. And one of the nice things about LSP is it downloads the stuff it needs for Java the first time you use it, and it puts it into a directory cache um, so it puts it into this directory, you know, emacs.cache.lsp eclipse. And so dot emacs.cache lsp eclipse. Um, and this has a plugins directory in it, so I just want to do this directory. And it says this, it says, do I want to save this to an environment variable? And that didn't actually work for me, but if I typed yes or no, regardless, this did run. So now if I did um, import, and it may take a little bit of time. There we go. You know, so it's the same completions, um, you know, etc. cetera. Um, and that actually did work. So I'm gonna save this and go back to my configuration. And what I actually found though, is um, I went to the, um, I looked at the Eaglot issues and I did a search, you know, I, I clicked up on issues here and I, I looked for uh, something like JDT or something like that. And what I found 
is I had to put this in. Uh, so this is not zero config, but it wasn't too bad. And I had, you know, so I just copied and pasted this from somebody opened the issue and then this was the solution. So where is my Eclipse JDT? Um, and here's where it is. And that's the specific thing with that launcher file. And that's the actual file that you'll find You know, if we look in here in the plugins, you know, this, this file here is the actual one in question. Um, and then stuff to modify the Java class path. So if I execute all of this now, um, and this should now all be good. So now if I go into temp z hello.java, And let's see. And once again, I get the language server version of the four. I get the, you know, int able, able equals 10, uh, int baker equals able plus 10. And once again, you know, so it's the same deal. Um, so it's a nice, consistent interface across all of them. So, so for, I think I'm going to stick with, um, and, you know, it's giving me all sorts of nice ideas on the bottom telling what's wrong. So I think I'm going to stick with Eglot or Eglot um, at least for a while because since I'm going to be using a little bit of Java in the teaching classes, um, I'm using C++ and Python. This way I'll have one consistent interface for all of them. And, um, you know, if you think about it, if we go back to the readme, um, the configuration is really pretty simple. This is the only thing that I find ugly about it. Um, but the configuration is basically install the language server on your machine and do Eagle Out and Sure. Um, so that's it. Very cool, um, very cool setup. Um, I'm liking it very much right now. I'll probably look at LSP again you know, in a few months or something and see if that, you know, like, like, um, you know, if the documentation shows me how to um, configure it more to my liking or if it works more to my liking. Um, but, you know, you should really check both of them out, um, you know, because because uh, they both look like pretty cool projects. And yeah, that's it for today. So enjoy.